everybody and welcome to this video of introduction to retopology in 3ds max this is the second video we are gonna uh, in which we are covering retopology in the first one we went over how we can do some uh, basic retopology inside zbrush so now we're going to take a look at how we can do that uh, same kind of uh, retopology inside 3ds max so for this, I'm going to use the same exact bust that I use in ZBrush. As you can see, it's a rather heavy model weighing at 3 million polygons. So this is not really optimized for any type of gaming or rigging or animation. So in order to be able to use this model for rigging or animation or pretty much anything else, I would probably have to go ahead and do a retopology. All right, so let's see how a retopology is done in 3ds max all right so for this in order to, for this to work you need to have one primitive in our scene so i can use either a box or a torus or uh, let's go with a teapot why not a teapot and all you have to do is here is go right click convert to an edible poly and as soon as this thing is an edible poly now you can open up the full ribbon the modeling ribbon and here you have different uh different menus with different options what the option that we are looking for is in the freeform section over here and more notably we are looking for this by default this should be on grid on your side so what you want to do is click here and click draw on surface as soon as this thing is done with surface click on here and click on torso or whatever uh, model is that you want to retopologize all right so once you do that you basically can start with the retopology but before i continue uh, forward i'm going to select my torso i'm going to right click go to object properties in the general tab i'm going to click on freeze and make sure show frozen in gray is ticked off and click ok so now i can no longer select the base of my mesh i can only select this one okay so now the first thing that you can do here is click on step build as soon as you hover over step build you're going to get this little button explaining all of the options that this uh step build offers you can basically click anywhere as you can see on none click to place vertices on the grid or surface if you're going to hold down shift it, it's going to fill in the gaps but it's better to, for me just to go ahead and show you so I'm going to click on step build and now I can actually go ahead and click on top of my mesh so when I click you're going to notice that I've set this vertex over here I can set another one and then maybe another one or another one and another one and then put another one over here put one here 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 and here so now all I have is just vertices, not connected with anything. But since I'm still in the step build, if I hold down shift and then click in the middle, this is going to get connected. So if I hold down shift and go ahead and click like this, I get polygons. So I can really quickly add a that I need. But now namely my polygons are kind of di diving inside the model and that is not something i want i want to have my polygons sticking up of the model so in order to be able to do this i can either put a push modifier but that would cause some problems or i can use this offset over here so if, for example if i put an offset of let's say 0 0.2 and now all new vertex uh, vertices that i place in they are going to hover above the surface so when i start to do it like this as you can see 
<clears throat> the new ones are above the surface. If I go ahead and make it even higher for let's try 0 0.3 and instead of putting new ones I can click on conform this button over here and conform is going to give you a brush size uh, look as you can see over here so now I can click and go over those polygons and that is going to conform them depending on the offset that I have set up over here so that's a very quick way of doing that smoothing surface look so I can go back to step build again and it's a pretty good idea uh, um, idea to go ahead and make this transparent so just press alt x and this is going to make it transparent so you can see better what's happening so now if I go again over step build it's telling you that if you for example would like to move one of these vertices around you have the ability to do it by by clicking on control shift and alt so by holding down control shift and alt you can click on any of these vertices and you can move them around like this so it's very very easy to reposition them again I can use this like that and very quickly reposition them to a more suitable area and now here's the thing when you're working with step build at any point you can just right click get out of step build then for example if i go over to modeling on swift loop i can come over here click and add in an extra loop but if i hold down shift when i'm clicking i'm going to make sure that this line follows that curvature so again back to freeform now i can hit and conform again and this is going to conform all of these polygons to the surface like this as you can see we're no longer losing any spaces and again hold down step build and shift and move these into a position so it's no longer overlapping the surface like that there we go awesome all right I can continue building this as quickly as I need it. So just hold down shift now and fill in the gaps. Now here's the thing. Uh, sometimes you will have a surface that will probably be uh, stubborn and won't like to connect. For example, I hold down shift here. It connects with no problems, but sometimes like, uh, well, it even connected over here, but sometimes it really won't like it, what you've done, and will give you a bit of a hustle until it kind of connects. So in order to get those vertices to connect, you can always manually draw in uh, a selection. For example, if I want to go ahead and scroll over st step build again, it says the second from the bottom, shift and alt, move the mouse cursor without dragging over vertices to select them, and then click to create a polygon from the selected vertices, useful for creating non-quad polygons. So basically what this is telling me is that if I hold down control and shift and then click on one, two, and then a three, like this I can create a triangle but it like I said it really really doesn't uh, uh, usually work like that but when you have four like these you can then you can hold down control and shift and when you click on the four it will define that polygon so that's a, a very similar to what we saw in ZBrush a very manual way of adding polygons all right, so let's, oops. There we go, let's delete this. So this is a very easy way of adding in geometry if you already have an underlying uh, high density mesh. 
using 3ds max to do your uh, retopology basically means that you can mix up uh, standard modeling techniques with the step build option in order to get a much more uh, well-defined model and model on which you have total control over so for example if i want to continue and make an arm for my character it's either, either an arm or a torso i can continue like with the step build and then uh go ahead and try to like for make the geometry like this and then with holding down the shift i can get in all of these uh, polygons in but there is another way that i can do this for example i can use this conform to my uh well to my advantage because i can mix it up and what do i mean by mixing it up for example i can for, uh, i know that my hand is pretty much a cylinder so i'm going to hit on cylinder before doing anything else i'm going to click on element and s select our teapot and delete it because we no longer need it i'm going to get my pivot to the center of the object probably should put it on over here maybe go like this and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to create create a cylinder and i'm going to try to put it in well let's try it like this I'm just going to try to wing it or more or less get it to where it's supposed to be. This is not actual uh, science. You just have to make it so it's as close as possible to the actual geometry. So for this, I'm going to retain this, make it a bit shorter and engulfs my entire arm, which I'm happy with awesome i can use this i should probably make it a, a tiny bit bigger with the radius awesome now this this can work all right so i'm going to go ahead right click convert to an edible poly for this i'm going to select the top and the bottom of the cylinder and delete so now i have the cylinder around my hand all right, I'm going to select my original mesh and I'm going to attach it with the cylinder. So now they're both uh, part of the same object. So this is now giving me the option to select all of these edges, add in a few connects. Let's try with, I don't know, maybe five connects. And now since both of these are part of the same mesh I can use the conform option over here to basically get this to conform to our arm and as I'm going over it you can notice that that cylinder is slowly starting to get on top of the arm there we go like this very very easy and fast way of getting the cylindrical geometry on top of the arm so like this to probably get the strength up a bit full strength let's try 30 yeah scroll around because this is very um depending on the viewport from which you're uh, viewing it I want to see it from all sides and just smooth it in that way you don't have to manually go ahead and do all of this there we go again if you get a firefly like this simply click and move it into position and then again, use the conform 
and get it back to where it's supposed to be. There we go. And with this, you basically have the arm more or less mapped out. You have nice overlaying geometry on top of this. And for this example, I kind of made this over simplistic. But if you have a geometry like this, for example, a cylinder in the body or the arm, you simply all you have to do is just count in the number of sides that you want to use for your arm and then put in a cylinder with that amount of sides and conform it to the body. That way you get quick and easy retopology for your arms. So having showed all of the things that we showed so far, we can uh, assume or we can call it a safe thing to say that retopology in Max can be done. It's a viable choice. It's not the fastest, it's not the slickest, but it works. It can get you the results that you need. And if you have to like really single out the strong points for uh, retopology in Max, it would be the fact that you can switch from going from the step build back to uh, traditional modeling tools or traditional modeling ways of dealing with geometry and then skip uh, skipping back to step step building and adding in new geometry so just remember that whenever you are working in step build and you need to add in something or you need to move something you can either go with a step build and hold down control shift and alt and move them around or move the vertices around or you can simply go right click and select the vertices and move them around to wherever you need them. The main difference is that when you move it with the step build, it will take this offset into consideration. And if you don't have that, uh, uh, if you don't have the step build and you're moving the vertices, you're basically you can put them inside the mesh. All right. So now another thing that's really really important to mention is that if you're going to use this model or this retopologized model for baking or of textures, you probably want to negate this offset. So it was okay to have it while we were making the model, but once we're done, we want to negate this difference. So the easiest way to negate this would be to push or put a push modifier on top of it. And now, since we have this uh, at a 0 0.3 offset, we can push the push modifier to minus 0 0.3. And this is going to negate that push effect. And we're gonna get our base mesh or our retopologized mesh to be in tune with the actual geometry of the model. So hope you had fun and you managed to learn something new. If you have any questions, leave them below. I will meet you in the comment section of the video. And if you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. So as always, Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.